This is the video you have been waiting for. If you're a trading addict like me, and if you want to dig deeper into your knowledge, deeper into what makes a good trade or a bad trade, this is the video for you. This video, I will explain to you what is a box trade? Why are box trades useful? How to construct a box trade and how we can use them to substitute for an income like treasuries or something that creates yield. I will also teach you how to use a box trade to replicate a loan. Yeah, you can actually use it to replicate a loan. And finally, I'm going to teach you how to use a box trade to hedge your portfolio. This is such an interesting video because it requires a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of knowledge that Uncle Tony is going to provide to you, a little bit of knowledge that will help you understand the options chain a little bit better. You see, everything that we do is inside this option chain. And the way we construct the trades inside the box, in, inside the options chain, chain is how we will be successful. So if you want to learn how to make money, how to construct a box trade, how to substitute a box trade for U.S. Treasuries, how to use a box trade for a margin loan, how to use a box trade to hedge your portfolio, how how box trades are constructed with verticals and th synthetics. It all sounds very fancy, very hard, but Uncle Tony is going to simplify the complex. So let's get to it. Tony, have you lost your mind? Are you painting like a little child? So I decided to show you guys before we go to the trade page, before we go to the option chain, is how to construct a box trade. A box trade is a box. Boom, 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 boom. So it has one, two, three, four corners. Four corners that construct a box. And let me get my beautiful face out of the picture so you guys can see what's going on. So here we have it. We have a box that is that has a long call here, a short put here, a short call here, and a long put here. All these four things, all these four things make a box. And let's paint our box. Whoop, whoop. And here we are constructing a box. It's an ugly box, I know. I know I'm not the best person painting boxes, but this is this is the box. So the box has four things. Has two calls and two puts, has a long call and has a long put. Has a short call and has a short put. So in if you look at it uh very simply, it's uh it's it's not a complex trade. This dotted line represents the uh at the money price and it means that the long call here is actually in the money. The short call here is out of the money. And on the other side, the long put is in the money and the short put is out of the money. Now, that is a long box, a long box. And I'm going to show you the difference between a long box and a short box. But to get started, we first have to do a long box. So when we started trading, we understand that the maximum value of a spread is the width of that spread. So if we have our calls here and our calls over here, and if that spread is 100 points, that means that spread can only go to 100 points. And on the put side, if we have a long put vertical that's 100 points wide, that means it can only go to 100 points. So if you understand risk put parity, which is a fancy word for saying that one side matches the other side in options trading. We understand that if we construct a box like that, where we have a long call vertical and a long put vertical, that means that that is a defined risk strategy, right? And the maximum value that that box can go to is 100, or it can go to zero. So let's take a look at what we have constructed. So our box trade actually consists of, you can look at it the two different ways. If you if we take a look at the calls this way, we can see that there's one in the money call and one other money call. And this is called a 
long call vertical. A long call vertical, excuse me. This is a long call vertical. And on the other side, we have a long put here. We have a short put over here. And this is a long put vertical. Beautiful. So it's quite easy. We see we have a long call vertical and a long put vertical. But I know you're already looking at my yellow things. So actually, this trade here, where we buy a call and sell a put at this level here, actually here is we are buying stock because this is a synthetic long. When we buy a call and sell a put at the same level, we're creating a synthetic. So this side of the trade is a lock. So we're actually buying stock at this level. And on the other side, we're actually selling stock because a short synthetic comprises of a long put and a short call at the same level. So this trade can be looked at it two ways. Either we have a two vertical here and a vertical here, or we have a synthetic here and a synthetic there. So it's two separate ways of looking at the same exact trade. Either we have a long call vertical versus a long put vertical, or we have a synthetic long call, a synthetic long stock versus a synthetic short stock. And now if this is, if all my, here, all my paintings are making you dizzy. Let's go to the trade page and dissect one by one what the hell we're constructing. We are now back in the Tasty Trade platform, and I'm going to construct both ways to construct the box trade. And uh, I, I need to teach you how to do the box trade before I tell you what the hell is the box trade used for. So let's start by going, uh, let's, let's go to August expiration and uh, since the S&P 500, thank God, is trading at a nice round number that I like, let's say 5,200, let's conduct a box trade with a long call here. Like I mentioned, the first thing we do. In fact, let's do it 50 wide. Let's buy a long call here at 5,150. And then we go 50 points out of the money. We sell that call here. And here we have it. We have this long call vertical that is worth $67. If we go to the curve and analyze, we can see, ooh, we can see a lot of stuff that we don't wanna see. When we take a look at what we created, we created this long call vertical where we have a deep in the money call and we sold an out of the money call. And this call we're paying $67.35. So it's, it's an 100 wide vertical, like I mentioned, it can only go to zero or to 200. If it goes to zero, we lose our debit because we, this is a debit trade. We lose $6,735. And if it goes to the other side, it goes to 100 and we make $3,420 on our long put vertical. So this is a debit trade where we're paying $65. Mm, and you're thinking, Tony's lost his mind. He's going to buy a, a vertical. Now let's construct it on the put side. So on the put side, we are buying the 5250 long put and selling the 5150, uh, the 150, 150 short put. And again, for this trade, we're gonna pay $32.05. Now let's take a look at what the hell did we do? So here we are, once again, this trade can only go to a hundred. So if, the S&P goes this way, we lose $3,200. If the S&P goes down to this level, we make $6,800, giving us the $100 maximum profit. But what if we combine both of them? What if we combine both of them? Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. So if we combine both of our trades, a long call vertical and a long put vertical, you know, then the price should be $100, right? because the, this trade can only go to $100. But guess what, trader friends? This trade is not $100, is $97.95. And you're thinking to yourself, I found something. I found a riskless trade that you pay less than the value of the trade. And let's confirm that when we look at the uh, curve and analyze. 
Oh my goodness, have you guys ever seen a trade that doesn't have any losing possibility? This trade right now, it's not magic. You can't lose money. If we go all the way down here, see what's hiding over here? It's all green. If we go all the way up here, it's still green. And you're thinking to yourself, there's some things might, must be off here. How come you cannot lose on a trade? Have you ever seen a trade where you can't lose money? Well, you can lose money, but I'll go into that a little further on. But if you wait to expiration, 100%, 100%, can not lose money. You're going to be paying $97.90 for something that is worth 100 That means when this trade expires in 128 days, $100 are going to be deposited into your account, and you only paid $97.65. So this trade actually has a 100% probability of making you money if you keep it until expiration. Before I go deeper into what box trades are used for or what are they good for, let's take a look at the synthetic part because this video it's not going to be only useful for you to understand box trade, but it's useful for you to understand other types of trades. So now let's create. Remember, when you buy a long call and you sell the put at the same price, look at that. It's 100 deltas. Let's take a look at the anal analysis type. It's exactly the same as if you bought long stock. That's called synthetic long stock. Why? Because you buy the call at the at one at one price and you sell the put at another price and this is a hundred delta a hundred long deltas and absolutely it has the same characteristics of long stock remember that what that was the other way of constructing uh, our box trade if we go on the put side and we we buy the put and sell the call oops sorry we buy the put and sell the call. Now we have a hundred negative deltas. Yes, a hundred negative deltas. And let's take a look at our analysis tab. Once again, if we create a synthetic short put, that means we are selling stock at 5250. In our other example, we were buying stock at 5250. So a short synthetic, short, short stocks synthetic, try to say that many, many times is you replicating selling short stock. And if we uh, remember on the call side, we're replicating buying long stock. So let's go back here and let's create our synthetic trade. And once again, boom, by the magic of television, we combined both the long synthetic call, which is here. And that's like if we were buying the S&P at 5150 and now Boom, we are selling the S&P at 50 to 50. So it's a different way of looking at the same thing. Some people would look at it as a, here we have in the, in the diagonal, we have a long call vertical. And in the other diagonal, we have a short put vertical. So this trade, you can look at it either a long call vertical versus a, a, a long put vertical or a synthetic long stock versus a synthetic short stock. It doesn't matter how you look at it. It all turns out the same. So Tony, now give us the nitty gritty. How come this trade has no risk? Well, actually, if you keep this trade to expiration, absolutely guys, you have no risk at all. And in order for me to make uh, this trade a little simpler, I'm going to go and move these to the 5100 and move this to the 5300. Why did I move that? Because I like round numbers. And it that's another rule for the box trades. It doesn't matter how wide you make your box trade, how narrow you make your box trade. It's still a box trade. The only difference is the, the wider you make it, the bigger the debit. And the bigger the debit, the more money you have to spend while buying the box trade. So what are box trades used for? So here is something very, very interesting.
box trades are a substitution for buying U.S. treasuries. Yep, yep, you won't. Yep, you want to believe me? You don't believe me? Let's take a look at something. Let's take a look at the U.S. Department of the Treasury, where they make the beautiful uh, treasury bills and treasury bonds. And here we can see that right now, I know for some of you who don't look at this every day like I do, we we can identify something that is weird. Number one thing that is weird is that the interest rates for short-term periods are higher than the interest rates for longer-term per periods. That is called an inverted yield curve. And an inver inverted yield curve normally sig signals a recession. I know, I know, I know there hasn't been a recession in a long time. Everybody's predicting a recession, and we have not had a recession. So why is that? Because the economy is strong. Uh, the, there's been a lot of job creation, and uh, companies are still making money. So we actually have not been uh, hit with a recession, even though interest rates have gone up. And another important observation here is that for the first time in a long time, you know, I'm old enough to remember 10, 15% interest rates. A lot of you have never and never experienced high interest rates. You guys grew up in an era of zero, zip, zip, zero interest rate policy. You see, they kept interest rates very low to stimulate the economy. And that uh, stimulation created a bubble in housing, a bubble in assets, a bubble in the stock market. So, and now the, uh, the officials all over the world, the central bankers, they know they created a bubble and now they want to deflate that bubble. But they want to deflate that bubble without crashing all the economies in the world. And that's why they're raising interest rates little by little. That's why we haven't gone to interest rates of 7, 8, 9%, because for sure, if we go there, we would, uh, we would crash the market. Now, back to the box trade. The only reason box trades are relevant right now is because there are good interest rates to be held right now. You see, if there weren't any good interest rates right now, box trades would be irrelevant. And they were irrelevant for 10, 12 years. In fact, I almost forgot how to do a box trade. And all of a sudden, when interest rates start going up, I said, shit, Tony, um, excuse my language. I hope YouTube doesn't ban my video. I said, oh, my God, interest rates are back and box trades are back. Now, let's take a look at our trading platform again and, and see why we can use a box trade to replicate a U.S. Treasury. So let's do some math. This trade, the value of this trade is $196.35. If we know that this 200 wide trade can only go to 200, that means that this trade has a profit of 200 minus 196.30. That gives us, write this thing down, trader friends, $3.70. So that means that from now till August, we are guaranteed to make a profit of $3.70. And why is that relevant? So once again, let's take a look at our interest rate. Let's take a look at how much money can we make if we buy treasuries at uh, from now to August. If we go to August, we have April, May, June, July, August, five months. So it's going to be uh, somewhere between 540 and 530. So it's five months. It's around uh, this area. So at least we, we have to make around 5%. So if we divide that $3.70, and divided by 196.3, 370 divided by Y96.3, that gives us, let me write it down again, 0 0.188. And this trade has 128 days out. So I'm going to divide this amount into 128 to convert our interest rate to a daily and then multiply by 365. And guess what? Bingo! 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 Boom, boom, boom. Let me show you. Oh, I don't know if you guys can see it. 
by the magic of television, we have 5.37%. That means as we do this trade, we are going to make 5.37% yield. And let's do that again. So we're paying, we're paying 196.70. Okay, we're gonna divide. We are going to divide 200 minus 196.30. If we subtract 200, which is the maximum value of the spread, okay? If we subtract 200 minus the value of this spread, oh my God, it's not looking. So forget about my stupid calculator. So 200 mi minus 196.30 gives us 370. That 370 that we have here, we're going to subtract, we're gonna divide that 370 into how much we're we're paying for the debit. So we take the 370 and divide it by 196.3. That gives us 0.0118%. And just here we are, just so you can see that I'm not tricking you guys. And now, since it's 128 days, let's divide that number into 128. And that is our yearly profit. That is our daily profit. And if we annualize this, we multiply by 365. Bingo, bango, bongo, boom, boom, boom. Hey, 5.37%. So, if we put this trade on, we are guaranteeing ourselves of 5.37%. And you're gonna ask yourself, Tony, why do this and not buy a US Treasury? Well, for two reasons. For some of you that do pay taxes like Uncle Tony, Uncle Tony's tax return is this, this, is humongous. Uncle Tony has to declare a lot of taxes because I run a few companies. I trade a lot, so my accountant loves me because I pay him a lot of money calculating my tax return. And uh, let's talk taxes. When you buy a US Treasury, you get interest income. And if you pay taxes in the US, like most of us do, that interest income goes into the interest bucket, you see? And that interest bucket is charged like normally like income like if you work for it. If you do a box trade, you know, the S&P, if you trade products like the SPX, there's a treatment. Number one, it's gonna be treated as capital gains. That $3.70 is gonna be treated as capital gains. Now, because you're trading SPX, a portion of that capital gain is going to be considered long-term capital gains. And another portion of that trade is going to be considered short-term capital gains. So please consult your accountant. Uncle Tony is not a tax advisor. I'm not giving tax ad advice, but I'm just telling you that it's much different to pay taxes on a capital gain than on interest. So if you do a box trade one year out, let's say 11 months out, then you're guaranteed that your uh, trade is gonna be long-term capital gains. And just for that reason, just for that reason, incredibly, you should be doing box trades instead of buying treasury bills. Of course, what's the negative? The negative is that it's going to suck a lot of money from your account and uh, it's gonna reduce the cash in your account. When you buy a US treasury, it you have the benefit of using that treasury as collateral for trading. So there's no free lunch, uh, trader friends. Uh, one requires more capital and the other one, uh, you know, can be used as margin because US treasuries are considered very liquid and very reliable products and brokerages like Tasty Trade uh, will use your treasury bills as margin. Now, but isn't that amazing? Let's say you want to park your money in a month, one month. So the, the yield that your box trade will give you will vary by the expiration you choose. And let's do another quick example. So Uncle Tony can prove to you guys that what I'm saying is absolutely true. So let's clear this out. Let's go to the table. And now let's go out 
as far as the eye can see. Let's see. Let's go to December 2026. And let's do, here we can do, oh, look at how nice. We can do a 200 widespread here and 200 widespread there. So our spreads are 400 wide. In a 400 wide spread, the maximum this, this spread can go to, of course, is 400. If we are paying $353 for a 400 uh, spread, you guys are math geniuses, right? You you guys know, know the math. Take a look at this, okay? So here we have, here we are go, we're, we're going, I'm buying 400 white here, 400 white here, and we're paying, we're paying $231. Now what happened? Oh my God, they closed the stock market on us. But you guys saw the price, $353. So let's take the example that we had, that it was $353. And let's subtract 400 wide, which is the width of the strike, minus 353, that's $47. Divide it into 353, gives us our yield. And then we divide that yield into 982 days left in our trade. And then we multiply by 365. And boom, 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 boys and girls. Guess what? Oh, 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 oh. 4.9%. 4 wow. So, Tony, if we go to a longer period, you're going to get less interest rates? Yes. Why? Because remember, remember the remember the U.S. Treasury yield that we were looking at here before. Here we are. Right now, we have an inverted yield curve, and an inverted yield curve. The longer we go out, the less interest rates we make. So, the box. I just did that example to show you guys that a box trade replicates whatever the U.S. Treasury yield is yielding at that exact time. If you do it two years out, you're going to get the yield for the two-year Treasury. If you do it one month out, you're going to get the yield for U.S. Treasury. If you do a, a 100 wide spread, then you're going to use a little bit of money. If you do a 500 wide spread, then you're going to use more money. Normally, I don't like to make it super, super wide. And the reason these very wide strikes are not very liquid, especially with further expiration. The closer you are at the money, the tighter the spreads are and the, the more realistic price you can get for your spread. So if you want to put in more money, let's say do 100, 200 wide or 300 wide uh, box trade. And if you need more money, if you have too much money to invest, then go ahead do one two three four five six ten spreads whatever the amount you want to invest and that is a very smart way to reproduce a u.s treasury investment now this is an, a section i don't know if i should teach you guys this i'm i sh probably should not teach you guys but you guys are gonna probably figure this out on your own so i might as well show you what's going on. So this, what I've been teaching you is a long box, a long box composed of long stock and, and long synthetic stock and short synthetic stock, or a long call vertical and a long put vertical. Now, this trade has a guaranteed profit, of course, uh, if you hold it to expiration. How can you lose money on a box trade? So if you are buying a US Treasury or you're buying bonds, if interest rates go up, the value of your bond will go down. Same thing with a box trade. So if you buy a box trade one year out and interest rates start going up, you will have a temporary loss in your, in, in, in your trade. That means if you need to close that trade out before the year, same thing as if you bought some treasury bills, same thing as if you bought uh, 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 some bonds, you will lose money because interest rates now are paying more than when you invested that money. So people right now can put the money to work in a higher interest rate, so they will pay you less money for your asset. And uh, so that is the risk. If you put in a box trade for, you know, if you put it for one month out, no problem. You can wait that month out in, to get your money out. 
Maybe you can't wait a month. I don't know. But uh, just be wary that there is risk. There is risk during the life of the trade. If interest rates go up, your box trade will go down. Now, if interest rates go down and you put in a juicy, juicy box trade, your box trade will go up and you might be able to almost make all your profit before expiration. Same thing as if you bought a U.S. Treasury. Same thing as if you bought some bonds. If you were lucky enough to buy the bonds at a higher interest rates and interest rates all of a sudden come down, guess what? You're going to be able to close your trade ahead of time or sell your bond or sell your treasury for a profit. So that's great. So once again, the risk of this trade is if you need the money or you need to close the trade before expiration. If interest rates go up, you lose money temporarily until expiration. If interest rates go down, you make money faster than you you should have made money on this. But now, this is something that might blow your mind. So let's say you need a little bit of money, right? And, uh, you know, you can pull money out of your brokerage account. And, um, and of course, they give you very nice, especially Tasty Trade has great, great uh, uh, terms for you to, to loan on margin. But if you want to use a box trade for margin, and uh, this is a disclaimer, everybody else who is risk averse, please close your eyes for the next, or close your ears, close your eyes, and don't, don't see what I'm going to show you for the next minute or two. So, you know, when you can buy something, you can also click here, this little button down here. Let me make the screen large. I know, I know people are telling me, Tony, I can't see anything. I know, I know. So here we go. We're going to go here to the Tasty Trade platform and we're going to click this thing that's called swap. And boom. If you sell a box trade, you are guaranteed a loss. Whoa. What? Yeah you are guaranteed a loss. But the difference here is you will lose that $3.40, $3.50, whatever the difference between the 100 width of the strikes. And you can take that money when you sell this box trade, that money is going to get deposited into your account. That money is going to be deposited into your account. That $97.60 is going to go into your account. and at, at expiration, you have to repay the $100. So how much is that loan costing you? That loan is costing you the $3.40 of this example. Now, if at expiration you do not repay this loan, you know they will repay the loan by themselves. They're going to suck the money out of your account. But let's say you need a, uh, a loan for something. Maybe you need a short-term loan to, I don't know, to buy something that you need or to, you know, whatever, a bridge loan or anything. Imagine this could work as a short-term line of credit. As long as you can repay it in the time that you place this trade, you can sell this trade. You can use that money for either more trades or invest it in something else. But at the moment that this trade expires, you have to put it back. You have to put it back because yeah, the this loan is being guaranteed by the other assets you have inside of your account. So please, now people, you can go back. I didn't teach you how to do a short box trade because I don't want to get in trouble. And uh, try to not do a short box trade, right? Let's say, let's say you're brokerage account is short on cash and you need some cash to meet some margin requirement or whatever. You can do a small box trade for a temporary cash infusion to get you out of that problem. And But remember, you're still going to pay that interest rate that the box trade is paying the other guy because the guy who bought the long, the green box trade is collecting interest. The guy who sold the red box trade is paying interest. So this gentleman or lady or person is collecting interest and this person is paying for interest. You can collect interest, pay interest, collect interest, pay interest. So we normally, what we do is we collect 
interest. You know, people, more advanced traders, sell treasuries. They go short bonds. And when you're short a bond, you are also short the interest rate. You have to pay the interest rate that the other person is holding. And now for the last, the bonus section of, of the video, where I'm going to teach you how to use a box trade to hedge a portfolio. So in order to understand this better, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go 100 wide because 100 wide, it's easier. So here we are. We move we move the trade to 100 wide and you see it's still green. It's double the 100 price. And so we have a $3.60 profit here in our trade. Let's pretend and you say, Tony, you know, I do not want that $3.60 cent trade. I want to use that money for something else. You know, this trade is going to pay you that $3.60. What can we use that $3.60 for? You can use that money to put on another trade and use that money to do something else with it. You can buy a pair of shoes. You can buy a long put. You can buy a long call. You can do whatever you want with it. But if you want to do it all in the same trade, in the same expiration, what I would tell you to do is this. So what, what the hell did you do, Tony? What, what the hell? So the only thing you have to do is you want to sacrifice. You want, you're going to tell the world that you do not want to use. You don't want that $3.60. And you want to, let's say, let's pretend you want to buy some sort of hedge if the stock market goes down. So what you do is you move your long call one strike up. Boom, to the 5110. And what happened? Let's take a look at what happened. So you're sacrificing all the profit to the right of your long, of your long call, and you still are not losing money. It's still green. But guess what? You just bought yourself a nice little uh, put spread for free. That means you are exchanging. You are exchanging. You are, you are exchanging your profit for your long uh, that you would get on the box trade in exchange for a long put. Now, if you say, Tony, this trade at 5110, I don't think we're going to go to 5110. Well, with the magic of television, guess what? You can move this trade to the right and maybe start it at the 5200 and, and voila. You see, I speak French too. Voila. Now, by moving all the structure to the right, by moving all the structure, to, the only thing that I did is move everything to the right. You see, on, on the previous uh, trade, we would only start making money if the S&P went down below 2110. And I, since I want to protect my portfolio immediately, I don't want to wait to 5210, 5110. I moved it everything to 5210. Now, if the S&P goes down from 50 to 10, bingo, bango, bongo. We, we grabbed our box trade. We moved it over here. And boom, boys and girls, trader friends, we have now a very nice hedge for free. So once again, let's recap. Box trades replicate a U.S. Treasury bill. Box trades can uh, be done as wide as you can, as wide as you want, or as narrow as you want. You can make them 50 wide, 100 wide, etc. If you need more units, buy more units. A, a box trade is made up of a long call vertical and a long put vertical, or it's made up of long synthetic stock and short synthetic stock. Depends if you look at a glass half full or half empty. You can, uh, once you do a box trade, you can uh, collect interest. And the risk of the box trade is going to be if interest rates go up, you lose money. If interest rates go down, you lose money. Forget about the part where I showed you that you can use a box trade for cash into your account. That I didn't explain that. Forget it. Delete it from, from your brain. And lastly, you can sacrifice the profit you have on your box trade in exchange for some short protection to the downside. And if, if that protection is too far away, move the whole structure to 
a place where you're comfortable at having that protection that could be at the money wow oh my god this video was much longer than i thought i thought i i hope it created a lot of value to you if if this was too complex watch it little by little because i broke everything down step by step remember my job is to make the complex easy the complex simple simplify the complex my job is to make you money my job is to grow your pile and if you want to grow your pile follow uncle tony but most important you gotta risk it to get the biscuit baby